of God from John chapter 20. We'll do verses 1 and 2 and then 11 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they've put him. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He, he asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Word of God. Have you ever driven through a long, dark tunnel? Or a dimly lit tunnel at best? Quarter mile, half mile, mile in? How do you feel as you drive through a tunnel? Is there a little bit of claustrophobia? A little bit of fear? You know, I'm... I'm in the middle of a mountain right now or underneath a body of water, I, I pray this structure has been constructed well because things could go bad real quick if something cracks or breaks. I guess maybe subconsciously I find myself when you come out on the other side as the light opens itself up again to your eyes kind of breathing a little, just a little sigh of, ah, it's nice to be out of there. And back into the light. Throughout the season of Lent, for about a month and a half, you could almost compare it to a journey in a, in a dark or, at best, a dimly lit tunnel. It was somber. It was sorrowful. It was serious. We journeyed with Jesus on the path to his cross. We, we looked at different names of wondrous love for our Savior, and we realized God so loved the world because we needed it. It was us, sinners, who put him on that cross. And when we left this church on Friday, or wherever you may have been Friday, perhaps you had a tenebrae service as well, it is good and right that it was dark. That's our sins that caused his lifeless clay to be put into a tomb. But today, everything changes, because today is Easter. We come out of that tunnel into the sunshine, into the light. The final name of wondrous love, Jesus, the light of the world. John chapter 20 here, we're told Mary Magdalene came very early while it was still dark. And certainly, John was talking about the condition of the sky that morning, but also I'd have to say there was a little bit of darkness in her heart as well. Put yourself into her shoes. Imagine what she's been through. If you've lost a loved one who's close to you, you perhaps know a little bit of what she's feeling. Everything's different now. You know, grief and sorrow and sadness and... That this person I loved, I, I'm not going to be able to laugh with him or her and cry with him or her and just sit down and talk with him or her. It just, it's, it, it's different. They're gone. 
Mary, even more so, remember in Luke chapter 8, we're told Jesus had cast seven devils out of her. Jesus had healed her from demon possession, and from that time on, she had been a very faithful follower of Jesus. She had, she had followed him with a living faith that trusted he was the promised one. But then this last week happened. And as we read earlier, it seems like a lot of them forgot his words that he had said, this is how it's going to happen, and everything happened just as he mentioned, but, but as it was happening, as it was going down, as it was unfolding in front of them, and you imagine the darkness on Mount Calvary Friday afternoon, it was even darker in her heart as she stood looking up at Jesus' cross. And as they took his body down, just like there was no light, in the tomb, when the stone was rolled over the entrance, so in her spirit, there must have been very little light as well. What happened? And, and at the very least, maybe the worst of all, here we are, Sunday morning, Sabbath is over, let's give him a proper burial, let's embalm him, let's do what we're supposed to do, and now even his body's gone, we can't even do that. Her last labor of love for her Lord don't even get the chance to give him that. He's literally gone. What a dark heart she must have had that morning. Tears of sorrow. What about you, friends? Can you relate to Mary Magdalene? Those dark points in your life? Maybe it's standing at a freshly dug grave of someone you love trying to hold back the tears, or not even bothering trying to hold them back, just letting them flow, and then going back time and time again, and the tears are there anew every time, sitting and talking with one whose body just isn't there anymore for you to hold and talk to and laugh with and cry with. Maybe it's the darkness of life as you read about North Korea and their threats of of war, the, the jihadists out there. It's, it's the stress of job and family and husband and wife and kids and parents and teachers and colleagues and fellow friends and students and there's days where it's just dark and black. Maybe it's the future. My health. My income. Will it hold up through retirement? My family and their health and their well-being. Maybe it's, it's sins of the past that you know they're forgiven and yet the guilt just still haunts you every day and you just can't seem to drive it away. And temptations that keep beating you as much as you tried to resist them and just feels dark. Well, hold on, if that's you or if you can relate. Just spend a few more minutes here with Mary Magdalene. Let's keep talking. Eventually, every day, what happens? Darkness goes away, right? And you have that moment of dawn where the light begins to arrive again. And as you read through this text and the rest of the Gospels, you see it gradually starting to develop the light of Easter dawn. Now, if Mary, if she would have been thinking rationally and not emotionally, she should have known. The disciples wouldn't have come and taken his body, right? What good would that have done them? Even if they would have, if they would have had the confidence after running away on Thursday evening and nowhere to be found on Friday, if they would have had the confidence to all of a sudden, let's go and get his body, and then they go around telling everyone, yeah, Jesus rose from the dead. A lot of people saw him up there dead. You're going to have to give me a little more proof than that, guys. What do you, okay, he's alive, let's see him. Show me. And that's what the Pharisees and rulers had said, right? These guys, what they're going to do is, is Pilate, they're going to come and say he rose from the dead, but really all they want to do is steal his body. And this last deception will be worse than the first. They knew that. It wasn't going to do them any good to take him. And we know the rulers wouldn't have taken him. That's the reason why the tomb was sealed and the guard was there in the first place. The sooner we get over this Jesus craze, the better it will be. 
The sooner people quit thinking Jesus of Nazareth is the king of the Jews, the better the whole nation will be for it. If we have to stay out there weeks, months, years, fine. We know it wasn't them who took the body, but the body's gone. How'd this happen? Some women go out early in the morning and they see that it's gone and they talk to the angels and they come back and they tell the disciples, right? He, he's not there. And they tell what the angels have said and what do they say? That's nonsense. Later, Peter sees the same thing in, in, in the Gospel from St. Luke. Later, the Emmaus disciples walk and talk with him. The light is slowly starting to come up over the horizon. And then they remembered what he said while he was still with them. Can you relate to that feeling? A dark day, a dark week, and then slowly, maybe it's here on a Sunday morning, you hear the news, your sins are forgiven, and a little bit of light begins to shine. Maybe this week wasn't so bad. Thinking about the death of a loved one or pondering your own. And out of nowhere in your head, the tune, I know that my Redeemer lives, starts being sung. Maybe death isn't so bad. The sins that plague us, the temptations that we succumb to all too often, we hear Jesus say, your sins are forgiven and you're at peace with God. Why am I still holding on to these things when God doesn't? And, and the future, worrying about our family and our own personal well-being, you hear Jesus say, doesn't each day have enough trouble of its own? Why are you worrying about tomorrow? Your Heavenly Father knows everything you need before you even ask Him. And the light slowly begins to shine. Of course, that period between darkness and light is just brief. Dawn quickly turns today. And that's what happened here for Mary on Easter morning as well. Very soon the sun came up, and so did the sun. Very soon the light appeared, and so did the light of the world. She had been there when it was dark. She had gone back to the disciples and reported what she had seen. Now she's back at the tomb, weeping and sobbing. And she tells the same sob story to the angels that she had told to the disciples. And then, whether Jesus had hid himself from her or if she was just so hysterical and she couldn't see him through the tears, Jesus is right there behind her and she tells him the same sob story she told the angels. He's gone. Maybe, Mr. Gardner, do you know where he is? Do you know where they've put him? I'll go get him. And with one word, Mary, tears of sadness turn to tears of joy. Rabboni, teacher, if I only would have listened, if I only would have believed you all along, I remember now, after three days, I will be raised to life. And here he was. And if he did this, if this is true, isn't everything else he said true also? Imagine her heart. That once dark heart, just an hour or two earlier. Ah! The serpent's head has been crushed. And he went down there to announce his victory too, didn't he? He was pierced for my transgressions, and now I have peace because of his punishment, because he's alive. It, there's, it's no coincidence that in the Easter season, the Old Testament reading is not really from the Old Testament, it's from the book of Acts, right? Why? Because this early church, these men and women who saw Jesus alive, they couldn't help speaking about the things they'd seen and heard. It overflowed the joy in their hearts. Jesus is alive. We know it, and we want you to know it too. The light was there. One final time I ask you, do you know how that feels? And I pray you do. Pastor, I know exactly how that feels. Easter light is something I live in every day. As I think about the darkness of life in Christ, it does not hold a candle to the light of life. 
As I think about my sins in Christ and his resurrection, he was delivered over to death for my sins, but he was raised to life to prove I'm not guilty for my justification. In Christ, I have it all. What did he say in John chapter 8? I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And not only is he our light here, but in the book of Revelation, talking about the heavenly city, the city does not need the sun, for the glory of God gives it light, and the Lamb is its lamp. It's all about Jesus, and he's alive. So today we come out of the dark tunnel of Lent into the light of Easter. And when the time comes where we journey through the valley of the shadow of death, those shadows aren't as menacing as they used to be because this Easter light shines in our tombs as well. When years have gone by and no one's there visiting us anymore and the etching on our gravestones has faded, Easter joy remains because we're with Jesus. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.